Enlightenment is the process of blossoming the thousand petaled lotus on the top of the head. Now that we've looked at the lower centers, what happens when we do change and move into the higher ones? Well, to understand that, we need to understand the nature of our body of consciousness. Take the egg of life, the original eight cells of the human body, a form that takes place shortly after conception and is created by a wave spreading across the embryo. This particular biological cell division is important because the body coming into form is perfectly and evenly divided into the four elements with the yin and yang of each giving you eight perfect spheres. These spheres each contain a piece of the whole, each representing a core aspect of the various parts of the human spirit as represented by different body parts. These eight spheres become the first physical representation of the complete eight chakra system, which from root to crown connects the physical energy of the earth through the body to the higher awareness of the dimensions beyond our bodies and our infinite connection with everything else in existence. The eighth chakra is the root of the next world, connecting you with your eternal self beyond the limits of your physical form. And as with the heart, a half step hides this portal for those who have reached the higher centers. And before we jump into this, just a reminder, if you're someone who really wants to experience a profound chakra healing, make sure to check out the seven day transformation in which we use the chakra system to completely rewire your consciousness quickly and effortlessly. The best part is it only takes a week. Think of the chakras like your field of awareness and depending on which one you're focused in, your awareness becomes focused and narrow or wide and expansive, kind of like using them as a lens, as we've mentioned earlier. When you're in the root, a survival focus, your perception is narrowed into just one thing, surviving the current crisis or situation that you find yourself in. All in all, it's a very thin beam. But now if you're in the third eye with your other chakras open and satisfied, your expanding vision goes very far and wide in order to see all of the connections at once. Your telepathic and mental reach also gets a pretty good XP boost. The third eye is all about seeing the geometry of the universe so that it can focus in on a very specific shape or expand its vision to a very wide understanding of all of the patterns in life and how they connect. You can imagine how you might switch between them on the fly too. Let's say you're camping out with some friends on a moonlit night. Everyone feels safe, Maybe there's some brotherly bonds being created while some guy plays a guitar around a campfire. You're telling a story, sharing meaningful experiences with your companions. And in this moment, your primary or dominant chakra is the heart and throat. And it's right around then that the bear shows up. And for the sake of the story, let's imagine that he's very hangry. Naturally, there's a lot of physical responses. Adrenaline surges throughout the body. Your fight or flight response kicks in too both of which are a reflection of the energetic shift within you. Think about it, everyone panics. Now nobody feels safe and everyone scatters, running for their lives. I mean, duh, it's a freaking bear. And he's having a bad day, taking one down, making a mess just to turn it around. Everyone's reality lens drops down to the root focus all at once. You all go into survival mode and remain there until everyone feels safe again after which you can scale back up the lower centers until we reach our equilibrium with each other, wherever that threshold is within your particular group. This example, of course, is only one of many possible responses to a hangry bear showing up. Depending on the awareness and training of the group, the responses could vary anywhere from calmly turning your back and walking away in peace, all the way to an energetic nod to the bear that you're friendly, and if the bear is interested, they'd love to do some photography together. The idea here is to say that if someone such as, let's say Jesus was in this circumstances, he'd probably radiate so much light and love and energy that the bear would be like, bro, teach me. As they would be communicating on an energetic and telepathic level and they'd be right as rain, super good friends. And on that note, human to animal communication is far more elegant and simple than we realize. However, that said, we as humans are not quite at that level yet so we don't exactly recommend going out and trying to take a selfie with a bear, at least not without some salmon or something to distract it. So generally what is required to expand your consciousness into the higher centers is a stable foundation of understanding 
and a healthy mental emotional connection within. The process of moving higher is in fact a shift in awareness and transition into the heart beyond the wall of the first half step. Now, previously we regarded the heart wall as a half step, but moving forward, I wanna continue this discussion and concept as a mirror wall, which also has some practical aspects to it for us today. In practice, when you see the mirror wall through these chakra lenses, it just shows you what you already know. And when you step through it, move into the heart, everything gets bigger. It's very through the looking glass style. This mirror wall or half step is essentially an invisible wall that hides the higher chakras from spirit when it's exploring the lower ones, especially when it's still new to this reality. But once a level of mastery has been established within the first three chakras, spirit can catch a glimpse of or even move into the next part of life experiences, stepping through the looking glass. Sometimes if there's a lot of shadow and darkness within oneself, we can refer to it as a black mirror because it's hard to look at when you go within yourself. It's dark and sometimes very scary. And yet we must be willing to face our inner darkness, face our black mirror or our mirror wall in order to step through it. I mean, hey, even Link had to face his shadow self in Ocarina of Time, right? Very briefly, however, we must touch on a rather secretive chakra that isn't really mentioned a lot, but is very important in energy work and within the higher paradigm. It's known sometimes as the Zayal chakra and is said to be located at the base and back of the skull. Physically, this chakra governs the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems and several other automatic functions, but it's also said to be the gatekeeper to your state of consciousness. It seems almost to be kind of like Da'at on the tree of life. It connects directly with the pineal and pituitary glands, the crown chakra, the heart chakra, and the kundalini, and acts as a primary channel for cosmic energy, like the crown, but serves to anchor that pranic juice to the physical plane. Because of this, it's very often used in occult practices and the magic arts as a means of manifestation, which is an idea echoed in many of its other names, like the mouth of God, the well of dreams, the jade gate, the jade pillow, or the ascension chakra. In fact, working with this chakra helps to completely balance the main chakra system and supports the natural healing ability of the body. Very Da'at-like indeed. Because it acts as a doorway of sorts for the universal energy to flow into the lower centers, a lot of people link this chakra with spiritual abilities like clairvoyance, telepathy, and multidimensional communication. Awakening and working with the Zayal chakra will also awaken many of our dormant abilities too. So while it is recommended you start with the root, Think of the Zayal as a supporting chakra that helps to make the awakening process even easier. And to relate this to the existing chakra system, this one might be between the third eye and the crown, probably like the F sharp key on the 12 chakra piano system. And in case this doesn't make sense, let's bring it full circle with this. What we're looking at here is the human eight chakra system, the primary chakras or nodal points running up and through the body. According to the wisdom teachings from which these systems come, human energy moves in the pattern you see here as an unfolded star tetrahedron opening up into a chain. The transition steps are located between the third and fourth chakras and the seventh and eight chakras. The difference between this system, seven and eight or 12 and 13 is really just about how you're analyzing the data. It's all the same data at the core level, but it's just different dimensions or angles of observation. So let's look at how the geometry of this actually works. We've looked at this before, and this time we're gonna go even deeper. The key here is actually many keys. I know, mind boggling, right? It's all inlaid in a piano. You know how an octave on a keyboard has five black keys and seven white keys? Those black keys are mid steps, known as semitones, between each of the white keys, which are called whole tones. In music theory, they're called sharps or flats, depending on which key that you're using as a reference point. Normally, one white key to a black key is a half step, and with the black key in the middle, from white to white is referred to as a whole step, because you're moving a semitone or a full tone up the scale respectively. However, when it happens between two white keys, this is an unusual transition, though less common, but still pertinent. It's a 90 degree shift in tones throughout the audible spectrum. And this is actually a pretty big deal when you relate it with consciousness. That half step between white keys is a point of transition, the singularity in aha moments when all of the dots of your life all connect with each other in a new way. Now, there's actually a lot more to this octave-based understanding that we want to elaborate a bit more here too. 
It's actually pretty simple when you think about it in terms of a 13 extra dimensional chakra system. Although we should say, you can use either system, both the eight system and 13 one have different benefits for different circumstances. See, the chromatic scale on a piano has 12 notes and the 13th is the return note, or rather the first note of the next octave. In every octave, there are seven notes and then the eighth is just the return note for the next octave, as well as overlapping with the previous one. This means that the eighth chakra of the octave and by extent, the 13th chakra of the chromatic scale are ultimately the same note and have the same role or purpose. And fully as a fun side note here, but if you're interested in joining me personally in learning piano, I've been doing some live streams lately on my own personal channel and I'll link that in the comments below too, just in case you wanna pop your head in. But to bring the conversation of all of these chakras to a close, it really is just the same 12 notes in creation that repeat over and over again at different wavelengths. It applies to music, to sound, it applies to color, and it even applies to us. Everything is cyclical and interconnected.